Today we're talking about songwriting and I will give you a few guidelines that will help you write a good bass line or at least not to write a bad one. First of all, always think in terms of rhythm section. What do I mean by that? In a rock band, a good relationship between bass and drums is the main foundation of the track. The real question is not how do I write a good bass line, but how do we lay down an awesome rhythm part? So when you think about the bass part, pay attention to what the drummer plays, especially what the kick does, and try to lay your notes over it. Listening to the drummer is the number one most important thing you can do as a bass player. Another One Bites the Dust by Queen is a perfect example. This is the quintessential rock bass line. Groovy, heavy, simple and very easy to remember. Its original player, John Deacon, was also the writer of the song, which by the way became the biggest hit Queen ever had. Good job, John. Kick and bass are supposed to sound like one tight unit, so make sure you're playing on all the main kick accents. Of course you don't have to play every note on the kick, in fact in another one bites the dust, the bass hits on the upbeat at the end of the second bar, giving the song the typical syncopated funk vibe that makes people want to dance. So keep the fundamentals in the right place and on top of that you can vary a bit. Number two, don't get in the way of the vocals or the guitar. Playing bass in a rock band and write creative bass lines is not that easy. The genre is dominated by guitar and vocals and the bass is often confined at being a foundation instrument. Giving the ground for everyone else to dance upon. The job of a bass player is to make everyone else sound better. So make sure your bass parts don't get in the way of the vocals or the guitar riffs. The vocals especially has to lean on the kick and bass foundation we just spoke about. So in rock music, as a general rule that of course can be broken, it's better to try and keep it simple when the vocals are on. However, you can use the space in between verses to throw in some licks. Check out Christine 16 by Kiss or the verse of Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. Number three, think of rests as notes. It's not what you play, it's what you don't play. We tend to think that a rest is a moment in which we're not doing anything. Try to think of a rest as if it's a note or a secret weapon, something you use only for special occasions. It can make the difference between an okay bass line and an epic one. Silence is key. Create a space and then put something into it. In this case, it's a snare. I find it for, for bass it's kind of more interesting not to play occasionally. Number four. Use no more than four notes. A good bass line has to be easy to remember. The less notes you use, the easier it is to memorize them for the listener. Here's a list of memorable bass lines that use less than four notes, sometimes only two or even one. The truth is that you don't need many notes to write a good bass line. And what matters more is not what you play, but when you play it. The bass guitar is the link between rhythm and melody, and you can use the best of both worlds. Of course, there are fantastic bass lines that have way more than four notes, but unless you're Chris Wolstenholm, it's better to start easy. Keep it simple. You know, if you can't think of a reason for, for a note to play, don't play it. By the way, if you're looking for inspiration, check my top 50 bass lines Spotify playlist, link below. Number five, use different rhythm figures for different song sections. This is a very simple solution that can help you diversify the parts without adding too many elements. 
For example, you can play the exact same notes both in the verse and in the chorus, but if you change the rhythm figure, for instance by playing quarter notes in the verse and eighth notes in the chorus, you'll be adding variety and dynamic change without changing the melody too much. This is very useful if both verse and chorus have a strong guitar riff, for example. Nikki Six of Motley Crue is very good at this, I've made a whole video about it, check the description below. Number 6. Don't be afraid to change the root note. Changing the root is a nice trick that gets very interesting results. You can either change the root of the chord and create a slash chord, or stick to the root while the guitar moves away, creating a pedal tone. My favorite example of slash chord is the pre-chorus of Wizards Body Holy. These type of slash chords are barely used in rock music and I've never understood why. I use them all the time and I just love the way they sound. For some reason I don't get, changing the root note seems to disturb guitar players. So if you're a guitar player, let me know in the comments what's wrong with it. It probably has to do with the fact that by changing the bass note and moving away from the root, to them it feels like you're changing the chord. If you play an F sharp under a D major chord, it sounds more like an F sharp than a D, though technically it's still a D major as the F sharp is a note that belongs to the chord anyway. So remember, you have a very powerful tool in your hands. Like Sting once said, it's not a C until I play a C. If you want to know more about slash chords or pedal tone, check my Chris Novoselic, John Deacon or David Ellefson videos. Number 7. Try write your bass line with a MIDI instrument. When we play, we all tend to be wanting to use that cool licks we just learned or that pentatonic figure we really feel comfortable in our fingers. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's easy to get carried away and to find ourselves overplaying or wanting to stick a certain lick or slide into the part at all costs. By writing the bass line with the MIDI, you will focus on the melody and it's going to be easier not to use unnecessary notes. Number 8. Listen to other styles of music other than the one you play. And keep an open mind. If you play in a blues band and listen only to blues music, you'll end up sounding like your favorite bass players. Nothing wrong with that, but if you want to write awesome music that stands out, you'll have to think outside the box. If you think about the innovators of their times, like Nirvana, The Police or Guns N' Roses, they all had that new element that bands before them didn't have. So don't be afraid to go listen to older styles of music and pay attention at what the bass and drums do. You will be surprised at the amount of stuff and ideas that you can use. Play what the song requires, they said. But remember, it's your song. You decide what it requires. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.